Hey guys, Ryan House here, and welcome back to our Dwarf Fortress Let's Play series. Uh, today, I'm going to be giving you guys a tutorial on how to set up your military, and more importantly, how to utilize your squads after having done so. Okay, so the first order of business is to go ahead and hit the N key for Nobles and Administrators, and scroll down to a vacant uh, militia captain position and hit enter. Here you can go ahead and choose the best qualified dwarf for the job. Uh, for this tutorial we're just going to go ahead and choose Silver Priest since he was the one uh, that requested the tutorial. Alright, All right. so uh, there is Silver Priest appointed as militia captain. Okay. At that point, uh, go ahead and hit the military key, which is the M key. It's going to take you over here to your squad list. And if you just start a fortress or you've never set up your military before, uh, this should all be vacant and empty except for Militia Captain. Uh, and sc scroll to that and select it. And then hit the C key to create squad. You see up here it says create squad. And then here it's going to give you a list of uniforms to choose from. Uh, these are pre-generated uniforms. Uh, later on you can go ahead and uh, create your own customized uniforms uh, for your squads to your own uh, desire. Okay, so here we have leather armor. Uh, that's going to be leather leather armored dwarves with an individual choice of melee weapon. And then you have metal armor, uh, metal armored dwarves with an individual choice of melee weapon. And then archers are going to be leather armored uh, ranged units with an individual choice of a ranged weapon. So for this instance, we're going to go ahead and select Archer. Alright, so we have a brand new squad here called the Channels of Radiance. And their Militia Captain is Silver Priest. Okay, so at this point you would want to go ahead and uh, fill out the ranks to your desire. However many dwarves you can field in the unit. And uh, for this uh, tutorial, however, we're just going to be using the Silver Priest. Okay, now... <clears throat> the next thing you want to do, or the next thing I can show you here, is hit the E key for equipment. And this is the equipment screen. You can see that here you can view and customize your unit. You can set up the types of armor, leggings, helmets, gloves, boots, and shields and weapons that your unit's going to be using. Okay? You can make this entirely customized to your heart's desire. Uh, currently it just says metal armor, so they're going to wear whatever metal armor they get. That'll be for their chest piece right here. And then you have headwear, legwear, handwear, footwear, shield and buckler, and individual choice of a melee weapon. If you wanted everybody in this unit, down here, to uh, carry spears, then you can go ahead and hit the W key, or you can scroll over here uh, to weapons for silver priests and scroll down to individual choice of range, hit enter, and then you would go ahead, uh, that, that would delete uh, the weapon, and then hit capital W, and then you can go ahead and scroll down for spear. So you can see here, uh, he's going to be wearing leather armor with a spear, okay? But uh, for this unit, since it's going to be a ranged unit, uh, let's go ahead and choose individual choice of range. Let's get rid of the spear. All right. So, uh, that's Silver Priest, and this is basically his uh, uniform. Alright, so, <clears throat> next thing, uh, hit the N key for uniforms. Here you can go ahead and customize uh, the uniforms for an entire unit. Uh, this is easy because uh, when you first set up your unit, it has everything already pre-selected. So you don't have to individually customize each dwarf. You can just give them this template. So. Uh, if you guys want to create uh, a group of dwarves wearing all iron armor with iron weapons, this is be the place that you can do it. Okay. All right. So next thing, hit the U key for supplies. Supplies is basically the drink and the food that your dwarves carry with them. In order for your dwarves to carry that said drink and food, uh, they're going to need a flask or a water skin uh, to carry drink and they're going to need a backpack or a sack to carry food, a bag to carry food. All right. But here you can go ahead and change the amount of, of water or drink or food. 
uh, for instance, let's go down the channels of radiance here. You can hit the plus or minus key to change these quantities. You can order them to not carry any water, to carry a drink, which would be usually alcohol, since dwarves love alcohol, or have them carry water. Now you definitely want your dwarves to carry drink, because being on the uh, on the job in the military as stressful as it is and dwarves get unhappy thoughts and probably one of the only happy thoughts that they do get is having a good drink okay and then you can also have them carry food and here you just use the backslash key and the asterisk to go ahead and change these values and you can have them carry three food you can have them carry no food one two or three right so if you want your dwarves to stay on position for longer periods of time without being thirsty or hungry, uh, you can change uh, how much uh, food or drink they carry. Okay, that's supplies, pretty simple. Uh, the next thing we're gonna take a look at is ammunition. Hit the F key. Now this is more important for range units. It's solely important for range units, actually. Um, but you can see here we also have another group called hunters here. So some of your dwarves have the job skill hunter, and they'll go out and they'll shoot uh, wildlife and bring the meat back to the fortress, right? Here you can dictate how much ammunition they're going to carry, and not only that, you can also dictate what type of ammunition that they're going to carry. But for this instance, we're going to go down to the Channels of Radiance, which is a ranged unit, and you can see that this is a military unit, so they carry more bolts, more ammunition uh, for combat purposes. But if we wanted to, because they're a military unit, they're also going to be training. Uh, so we can go ahead and dictate uh, what type of bolts or what type of ammunition that we want them to use for training. We want them to use that low quality, easy to make ammunition and have the rarer, uh, more damaging ammunition used specifically and solely for combat, right? So uh, let's go over here to bolts and let's uh, lower this number to uh, 150 bolts and they will be using them only in combat so hit shift T to remove uh, the T sign right there so that stands for combat the T stands for training see alright now we can go ahead and dictate what type of material it is by hitting capital M and we can say we want you to use metal bolts for combat now if you hit the C key you can add an item uh, Let's add bolts, remove the C, this is for training, and then choose the material. We want them to only use these 100 bolts made of bone for training. So bone bolts will be used for uh, target practice at the archery range, while the metal bolts that they carry with them will be used solely for combat. That's a very uh, important thing to do, <clears throat> especially when you have limited quantities of expensive ammunition and you don't want them just throwing it away at archery targets right so when they run out of bone bolts they run out of bone bolts who cares at least they have their metal bolts for combat all right so that is that uh, the next part we're gonna look at here is schedule hit the S key uh, the schedule is basically broken down to 12 months of a year for Dwarf Fortress here you have each of your squads, the geared labyrinths, cobalt flyers, the granite senses, and if you hit the plus key, the channels of radiance. And for every month of the year, we have our squad uh, selected to train. So train, 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 train. If we wanted to, uh, we could remove that order to train and give them no scheduled order for six months of the year. And the other six months of the year, uh, they'll they'll be training. So uh, for six months of the year, they'll have no scheduled order. Uh, they don't have any active duty um, uh, orders to do. So they'll basically be uh, civilians. Okay. Anyhow, uh, that's that's this is important when you have multiple squads and you don't want your squads on duty 24/7, 365 days of the year right so you can have uh, one squad on for six months while the other squads off for six months okay all right uh, that would obviously have to do with happy thoughts right doors are happy when they're not serving in the military they're happier when they can just be in the mead hall drinking up all the beer all right anywho 
Uh, let's go ahead and hit escape and let's go over here to alerts. Hit the A key. Let's go to alerts. Now this is important. You can see here uh, for the alerts, inactive alerts, currently we have the channels of radiance. It's a military unit that we created but it's inactive. Uh, the other three are active. If you go down to active training over here, you can see the geared labyrinths, the cobalt flyers, and the granite sen senses are current, currently active duty military units. They're training, they're in uniform, they're wearing their gear, they're ready to fight. However, the channel of radiance is not. If you wanted to go ahead and set them up as active, it's simple as selecting it and hitting enter. Okay? So that's all uh, alerts really is about. You can see up here, active in training, three squads, no burrow uh, restrictions. I'm not going to be going over burrows in depth in this tutorial, uh, perhaps in another series. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much everything you need to know about the military tab. Okay, I suggest you guys fool around with this a bit, have some fun, and get to know it like the back of your hand. Okay, alright, so after you've done that, you've set up your military, uh, you've put everybody into your squad. Uh, now, hit the S key and go to squads. Here you're going to have a list of all your active squads and your inactive squads. Uh, go ahead and choose uh, our squad here, the Channels of Radiance, the D key. And you can see down here, uh, its schedule is currently inactive. If we wanted to, we'd hit the T key to activate them, like so. Now, they are activated. So Silver Priest is active military. That means he's going to train, he's going to do this, he's going to do that. Whatever we ordered him to do, right? Now, if we wanted to, say there's an enemy goblin uh, that's invading our fortress. We can order them to attack with the K key, and then we'd select the creature wherever he's out on the map. Or we can select from a list of all the creatures, other creatures that are on the map that are not tamed, and they're not our dwarves, and they're not our friends, right? So here you can see Labash uh, Rouletimos. Uh, he's an outpost liaison from our friendly neighbor of Ablel Arbos, a dwarven nation. If we wanted to, we can attack him. We're obviously not. But we could go ahead and order uh, Silver Priest to go ahead and attack the Raven on the map. And if you hit Shift and... Uh, C, you can select B and C. If you hit Shift, uh, B, C, D, E, F, G, you can select everything with the Shift key. You can select multiple targets, right? So that would basically send Silver Priest on a hunt outside shooting ravens out of the sky. That's what he would be doing, okay? Now that's the attack key. Uh, another useful uh, key is the M key for move. Uh, this would order Silver Priest to move to desired location and all you'd have to do is hit enter and Silver Priest will move right there. Uh, that's where he'll go, that's where we told him to go. If it's a unit, then the unit will um, group up around that location. Okay. If we wanted to go ahead and cancel that station, we could go ahead and hit the O key to cancel station. You see up here we have the geared labyrinths. If you hit the Z key, it's going to zoom to their location. So, uh, right now, let's go ahead and cancel their station. Alright? So, I have them stationed there, but no need to station them there because this is actually their barracks. This is where they train anyways. Okay? So, another thing that you do need to set up is the barracks. In order to set up a barracks, you need to place an armor stand or a weapons rack. So, you go over here. You can see here, uh, we place an armor stand and you hit the R key to make it a barracks or armory. So let's go ahead and hit enter. Now it's a barracks or armory and now we need to assign the room uh, to one of our uh, let's see here. We need to assign the room to one of our units here. We go to, down to channels of radiance. You can uh, order them to train here to store their squad equipment here at the location to also store their individual equipment at the location and to sleep if you wanted. Now obviously if they're going to be sleeping you're going to need beds in this local area here. In order to store their squad and their individual equipment you're going to need to store cabinets and coffers as well. Uh, but to train 
It doesn't require anything. Uh, just this armor armor stand. All right. So anyway, uh, that is how to set up training areas for your units. Now let's go up to our archery poster. You can see here we have uh, archery area already set up. Uh, we have it set up to shoot from the bottom to the top. We want them to shoot from the top to the bottom. The top up here to the bottom down here. Okay, And that would be for all of these targets here. I don't know if I'd have to actually set them up each individually as an archer range. But if we did need to, we'd just hit the R key, expand it to where it needs to go like that. And then using the WASD keys, uh, choose, oops, choose uh, which direction they would shoot from. So for instance, here we would have them shoot from top to bottom, right? So they stand up here and shoot down like that. All right, but of course we would have to assign uh, the squad that's allowed to train here. So we'd say channels of radiance, train here at this archery range, okay? So that's that. Pretty simple, uh, pretty self-explanatory. Okay, all right. So, uh, by and large, that's everything you guys need to know about the military. Um, I wish you guys the best of luck out there. I hope you guys slay many a goblin and many a forgotten beast in the future. Uh, and stay tuned for the next Let's Play. We're going to be uh, playing quite a bit more of Dwarf Fortress. I think we're going to be playing this uh, Dwarf Fortress here until it falls. So that could be 200 episodes from now. Who knows? Okay. But uh, thanks for joining me. I'm Right House, and I'll see you guys in the next Let's Play.